The 2-0 Chicago White Sox are looking for an opening series sweep against the Cleveland Indians. The first two games have gone very well for the Chicago White Sox on all sides of the ball. They look to continue that trend here. Nick Swisher leads things off for the White Sox. The first pitch from Carmona is taken for a strike. Nick Swisher said patience was going to be something he worked on improving this year, and he takes another pitch low for ball one. That one's popped up. Martinez under it with the catch. So that pitch he probably could have taken as well, but he's making strides as a leadoff batter. Just working the count, I think he'll have more success. Cabrera on the first pitch. That's a drive, but Sizemore has too much range in center field. He's taken away plenty of hits in his time here in Cleveland. Jim Tomey, first pitch swinging. Chopper to third. Nice play by Blake, and that'll end the inning. One, two, three, go the White Sox. Brady Sizemore will lead it off for the try, batting 667. The leadoff man for Cleveland has been their hottest hitter so far. Contreras is ahead 0-2. The 0-2 probably going with the breaking pitch here. And that's going to be in between second and short for a single. Grady Sizemore, he is known for his ability to hit with two strikes. No different there. Jason Michaels, Canerco can't field it, neither can Uribe. It's a ground ball with eyes, and Cleveland is in business. Travis Hafner hit a home run yesterday, sparked a potential Cleveland rally, and he's going to do something similar here. Deep to right, no doubt about this one. That was very similar to Jim Tomey's home run yesterday, and it's a three-run shot. That is not an ideal start from Jose Contreras, and he's still got to deal with the heart of the Cleveland order. Victor Martinez just got under it, and it's popped up. Contreras calls off Cabrera to make the play. The first out recorded by Contreras, he needed that, and that was not the best of pitches either. He got very lucky. Casey Blake into center. Swisher will let it bounce in front of him for a single. It is not going well here for Contreras. David DeLucci now at the plate. Ground ball, that's another hit. The hits keep on coming for the Tribe. Jose Contreras has to limit the damage here. He could really use a ground ball. That's what he'll get. Creedy steps on third. One play at first. He got it. A rare 5-3 double play. Creedy steps on third and goes to first for the double play, and they get out of it. But Travis Hafner does the damage with a three-run blast. Here's Paul Canerco. Always dangerous. He's had a great start to the season, and that's a single. Paul Canerco and Jim Tomey, the heart of the White Sox order, have been the main reasons for their success in the last couple of seasons, and they're looking to continue that trend here in 2008. Jermaine Dye now at the plate. He's off to a slow start this season as he takes one low and in. Takes another pitch away. I think, again, for a lot of White Sox batters, it's going to be plate discipline. That's going to be the major issue. That's a chopper to first. Hafner, he only has one play at first, so that serves as a sacrifice. Runner at second for A.J. Prezinski. Another player who's been struggling. Ground ball fielded by Carmona, and he will go to third. Tag play, Canerco's out, and that is not what the White Sox wanted there. Here's Carlos Quentin. He struggled. Batting only 125 in his first season with the White Sox. There's a chopper. Carmona reaching over his head. And an easy out. So the inning will end after the Canerco single. We are in the bottom of the second. Franklin Gutierrez due up for Cleveland. First pitch called strike. That one on 0-1 is line foul. So quickly it's 0-2. Contreras coming back with a breaking pitch. Chopper in front of the plate. Fielded by A.J. But the throw not in time. Gutierrez uses his speed. It's a leadoff hit for Cleveland. Runner on, one out. That one is chopped foul. It's now 0-2. 0-2, ground ball. Cabrera, that's going to be another 6-4-3 double play. The White Sox excel at turning these plays. They've been a joy to watch defensively so far this year. Here's Grady Sizemore started the Cleveland first inning rally. He's been their best hitter all season, but now he's down quickly 0-2. This is a big out from Contreras, and he gets it. 
Sizemore thought fastball. He got change low and a swing and a miss. Leading off the inning is Joe Creedy. He had a good end to his game at the plate, but he's going to ground out to Travis Hafner here. So here's Juan Uribe now with one out. He's actually had a great season at the plate and in the field. Whenever you have a second baseman like Juan Uribe, converted shortstop, but he can also play second base with the addition of Orlando Cabrera. Those two can also be interchangeable as he takes that one low and in. I think that just adds depth to this middle infield, veteran presence. The White Sox really need that. We saw them really struggle in the middle infield last season. And that's a swing and a miss, strike three. So two are now down. Here's Nick Swisher. Batting only 200 on the season. He does have a run batted in. That was a key insurance run last game. Takes that one away. We talked in his first bat about play discipline. He says he's just been out in front too much, trying to do too much. Instead, as a leadoff hitter, he's just got to settle in, have high at bats. That one he chases and grounds to Johnny Peralta. That'll end the inning. It's been a rough day for the White Sox offense. Only one hit through three innings. And Cleveland will have their heart of the order due up. Here's Jason Michaels facing Jose Contreras. Contreras, a nice second inning after a very rough first inning in which he gave up five hits, including a home run. Whenever you give up five hits in the first inning, you're guaranteed to be in a struggle. 0-2 the count. I think for Contreras last season, we saw issues just settling down, giving up a lot of early runs, as there's a hit for Jason Michaels, who's been quietly very effective for the Indians here. Travis Hafner now up. Oh, he should have made him pay. That was a fastball right down the middle. They send Michaels. Failed hit and run. Down he goes. Jason Michaels is injured after the slide. They will take him to examination. The 0-2 changeup swing and a miss. That was not a good at bat for Travis Hafner. Missed on a hit and run. Then went down 0-2 and, and struck out. Here's Victor Martinez. On one account, chopper to second. Uribe has it. Makes the play. So the Tribe go down after the caught stealing. And the White Sox still trail 3-0. Jason Michaels will be able to stay in the game for the Tribe. That's some good news for them because he has given them some offensive spark. Whether you notice it or not. Here's Orlando Cabrera. Talk about some offensive spark and defensive spark. He's been very impressive. That's Pop. Johnny Peralta under it. Got enough range. Not hit hard enough. Out number one, here's Jim Tomey. Four home runs on the season, batting 556. And that was a fastball down the middle. He really should have made better contact on that one. The 0 1! He responds to that. Deep to right, DeLucci. Oh, it goes over. DeLucci nearly stole it from him, but it just goes over his outstretched glove. If he would have been there to turn in just a second earlier, Tomey would have been robbed of his fifth home run. But instead, the Chicago White Sox score their first run. DeLucci was not able to climb the wall quick enough. Chicago gets a run and now trail 3-1. Canerco, a bloop. He's got his second hit of the game. Can the White Sox get a rally going? Jermaine Dye now up. He struggled so far this season. Just hasn't really gotten any power on the ball. He's put the ball in play. He's just not barreling it at the chopper. Could be two. Carroll will go to second for one, but they will not be able to get Die at first. Good hustle by Jermaine Die. It was just hit too softly. A.J. Przinski, it's been a rough season for him so far. Of course, it's very early, carrying an average under 115. Grounded. Peralta is there. Runs in. Throw to first. Inning over. Jim Tomey crushes one to right. It was nearly robbed, but just went over. Sox lead it now, or the White Sox trail it 3-1. to one. First pitch, and that will be taken for a strike. 0-2 is the quick count here. The 0-2 from Contreras. Line, Canerco was there and making the play at a shoestring. One quick out. 
David Alucci now up for Cleveland. Again, this part of the Cleveland order can be very dangerous if you don't pay him close enough attention. The 0-2 from Contreras. Ground ball. Uribe can't get there. That will be ruled a hit, although Uribe probably should have gotten to that one. So now, Johnny Peralta's up. He struggled. He had one nice hit at the beginning of this series. Cleveland's first run of the year. Hasn't gotten a hit since then. And that will continue as Swisher is over to make the play. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Franklin Gutierrez at the plate. He has had an up and down start to the year so far. That's line. That'll be a single. Quentin can't get there. Into the gap. Will they send the runner home? They will. Relay's not in time. It's an RBI double for Franklin Gutierrez. Cleveland leads it 4-1. to one. Quentin couldn't get a good angle on the base hit. And it was turned into a two-base hit. So now Jamie Carroll to the plate. Rounded. That's foul. Canerco tried to make a play on it either way. The 0-2. Cabrera charging. What a play. It went off Contreras' glove. Cabrera charged it and got it to first. They get him by an inch. What an inning. By Orlando Cabrera. So now we go to the top of the fifth. Here's Carlos Quentin. And that will be his first White Sox hit. Welcome aboard, Carlos Quentin. They need to get him going. Here's Joe Creedy. He's over. He's hitless today. Rounded, and that is going to be a 6-4-3 with ease. That is not what they wanted right there, just to have Quentin get his first hit of the year and have Joe Creedy ground into another double play. That's the risk when you're a contact hitter and you have a runner on. So here's Juan Uribe. That is going to be blooped. And that will be caught by Sizemore. Many center fielders would let that one bounce for a single. Not Grady Sizemore. And Sizemore will lead off the bottom of the fifth. Chopper, Canerco, tough play. Nice play by Canerco. And he will flip it to Contreras for the first out. It was a difficult play, high bounce, but Canerco played it perfectly. Stayed behind the bag in fair territory, and he gets the out. That's a veteran play right there by Canerco. Michael's chopper, Creedy comes in, two outs. Defense of the White Sox certainly working much better here. Here's Travis Hafner. It's been a tale of two innings for him. His first at bat, a three-run blast. His second at bat, a failed hit and run and a strikeout. But again, that home run was all that Indians fans are going to remember. That's a ground ball. Creedy ranges over to his left. Nice play by Creedy. 1-2-3 goes Cleveland. So the White Sox will look to get some more runs on the board. Nick Swisher leads off the inning. He got one of his only hits as a member of the White Sox, and that's a good take. Miss it low and away. The 1-0. Ground ball. And that can't be fielded by Carmona. That's a single. So Nick Swisher aboard. Orlando Cabrera now follows him. The pitch. Ground ball. Could be a double play. They get him at second. And nice hustle by Cabrera. Beats out the double play. Here's Jim Tomey. One for two with a home run already in this one. Takes that one high in end. I don't think Carmona wants any part of him. It's 2-0. The thing is, you can't walk him because you have Paul Canerco due up next. That's going to be a blooper. Peralta was there. Deceptive. Looked like it might have gone over his head. Here's Canerco. Two for two. Two singles today. They could really use him here. Swing and a drive. He goes opposite field. It's a one-run game. Paul Canerco. His fourth home run of the season. And boy, did they need that. So they get Tommy out. They forgot about Canerco. And he makes them pay to deep right field. He knew it right off the bat. And now it's a one-run game. Cleveland starting to sweat nervously. Jermaine Dye, ground ball. Casey Blake there. And he'll throw him out. Victor Martinez now leading it off for, for the Tribe. He's 0 for 2. The White Sox are going to make a, piss, a pitching change. It's going to be Aaron Wasserman. The submarine pitcher will come in to try to 
Get a quick one, two, three inning here in the bottom of the sixth. Martinez takes a strike one. That's popped. Swisher going over, going in, and making a catch. Great start to the season for, Washer, for Wasserman. Casey Blake now up. He's had a very difficult time of things, batting 100. 0-2 is now the count. The pitch. That's in the right. Jermaine Dye, line drive, and he'll make the play. Two now up. Two for two with two singles today. Wasserman looking for a quick 1-2-3 inning in relief. He's already ahead 0-1. White Sox pitchers have done a great job of getting ahead in counts. We've seen a lot of 0-1, 0-2, 1-2 counts. Sinker, swing and a miss. Great inning from Aaron Wasserman. We're going to the final three innings here in Cleveland. White Sox bottom of the order trying to get something started. Carmona still on the bump for the try. A.J. Pruszynski. It's been a rough start to the year. That is going to be popped into center. Sizemore goes over. That's a routine play for Grady Sizemore, I'll tell you what. Here's Carlos Quentin, batting 100 on the season. Takes that one. Ooh, he didn't like that call. He thought that was a ball. It was called a strike. I think I agree with Quentin there. That one's popped. He didn't get any of that, really. That's a hittable pitch. David DeLucci makes the play, and there's two quick outs. Joe Creedy's in need of some offensive spark. Last time up, grounded into a killer double play. Chopper, Hafner, it's just not been hard enough contact for Creedy this year. Carmona gets the White Sox to go down 1-2-3. Seventh inning stretch time in Cleveland. They still lead it 4-3. Aaron Ross Wasserman will still pitch here in the bottom of the seventh. That's a questionable decision by Ozzie Gian. He's been criticized in recent years for leaving pitchers in too long. We'll see if Wasserman can get out of this here. Peralta up. Maybe he's only going for him for one batter, and if they can face a lefty, he'll go to Boone Logan. We haven't seen him this year. Or he'll try to stick with Wasserman and get to Dotel, Linebrink, and Jenks. The 0-2 from Wasserman. Grounded. Uribe couldn't get to that. That was hit way too hard. So here's Franklin Gutierrez. Two for two, a single and a double. He's got his average up to 300 early this season. Sinker, grounder, free, over to second for one, over to first, two, a double play, 5-4-3, and now Jamie Carroll is up for the try. That is in the center, that's going to be a bloop single. That was a necessary hit for Jamie Carroll, maybe that'll get him going, and that'll bring up Grady Sizemore. Swing and a drive to right, Grady Sizemore makes the White Sox pay again, a two-run home run to right, he has been killing the White Sox all series. Home run number one for Sizemore. It's now 6-3, and Guillen should have pulled the plug. He probably should have turned to Boone Logan. Now he will turn to Matt Thornton out of the bullpen. Thornton has a lot of potential to be a potential closer, late relief pitcher. We'll see what we can get for him here as Jason Michaels is up for the Tribe. 0-1 the count. Thornton misses in 1-1. Grounded to short. Cabrera is there, and he will get the out. So that'll end the inning. But Grady Sizemore's two-run blast gave the Indians a 6-3 lead. Even more difficult for the White Sox now. So Juan Uribe grounds that one to first, and that'll be an easy out. Nick Swisher now up. One for three, a single. He really needs to start getting things going here. Takes that one for strike one. The 0-1 to Swisher. That's low and in. 1-1 one one now. 1-1 one one from Carmona. Misses high and in. Swisher, he's been a lot more patient today, and that's really been to his advantage, but that's a soft ground ball. Carmona to first. Two down. Here's Orlando Cabrera. Rough game at the plate for him. He's 0-3. Misses that low. 1-0 the count now on Orlando. That's 2-0 quickly. That's lined in a right field. It's got a chance. It's gone. Orlando Cabrera. And he manages to find a way to make another impact on a game. He is now at 98 career home runs. And we hope that he can get to that 100 mark sometime soon. 
So now all of a sudden, if you're Cleveland, you have to deal with Jim Tomey. It's a two-run game, and oh, Tomey should have taken advantage of that pitch. That was a fastball right down the middle. Ground ball to third. Blake is there. Easy play. Inning over. Orlando Cabrera is the hero right now for the White Sox, keeping them in this game. Matt Thornton, his day is done. The White Sox will turn it to Octavio Dotel. Had a good performance on opening day. He will look to continue that trend here against Travis Hafner, a dangerous hitter. Without his three-run home run, the White Sox will be out in front. Canerco steps on the bag, toys with him a little bit. One down. Dotel worked quickly on opening day, looking to establish the same trend here. Another ground ball to Canerco, and another play made by Canerco. Two down. Here's Casey Blake. Boy, has it been a rough start to the season for him. Not at 100 yet. He's had a lot of chances to make something happen, and he hasn't. And that's another out. We're going to the ninth. Cleveland leads at 6-4. Canerco dying for Jinsky. That is a very promising sign if you're the White Sox to have Canerco leading off the inning. So far this series, as the Indians turn it to Rafael Betancourt out of the bullpen, Canerco has been very efficient. He's hit four home runs, and that one he takes outside, ball one. That's grounded. Oh, just extended too far. Jamie Carroll makes a play, one away. Jermaine dies 0 for 3 today, looking to get something going, and he takes that one for strike one. A little low, but it was in the zone. That's pop, blooped, size more. This time he can't get to it. Jermaine dies aboard. And the White Sox are going to call for a pinch hitter here. It's Alexei Ramirez, the rookie. They do not let A.J. Prezinski bat because they have Toby Hall still on the bench. I don't know what they're thinking, but they are going for Alexei Ramirez, the rookie, to see what he can do. And on the first pitch... He bloops one for a single. Welcome to the majors, Alexei Ramirez. So now there's two on for Carlos Quentin. Tying run at first. That could be a single. DeLucci makes the catch. Oh, no. Dice hung out to dry. And they tag him out. It's a game-ending double play. How could that happen? That is not how I expected that game to end. But nevertheless, the White Sox lose for the first time this season. Oh, that's an unfortunate end to an excellent game. They had the tying run on, but they just couldn't get the job done. So the White Sox, 2-1. and one, They win the series still in Cleveland. A wise man once said, if you win every series, you will be in excellent position no matter what happens. And I think it's a great start considering the opponent. Cleveland is going to be a very good team again this year. We saw that heart of the order. We saw Grady Sizemore rip our hearts out in the, in, the, in the field and really crush us at the plate along with Travis Hafner. So the White Sox will now travel to Comerica Park for a weekend series. And then after that, they're back at home against Minnesota. We will see you then.